The largest continent in the world, Asia, has a diverse set of teams that will compete in the Women's World Cup. There will be six countries from the AFC, including Australia, which joined the Confederation in 2006. The Matildas are the world number 10 and there's high hopes for the co-hosts. Although their competition has been described as a nightmare group, playing Ireland, one of Africa's best in Nigeria, and Canada, who won Olympic gold just two years ago. The Tillies won Australian football's first major international trophy as part of the AFC at the 2010 Asian Cup. And now expectations are high for a World Cup on home soil thanks to the influence of one of the game's best players and the country's most loved athlete, Captain Sam Kerr. On Australia's tail is Japan at number 11, a powerhouse in women's football and highly respected in Asia. In 2011, they made history as the first Asian team to ever win a World Cup final. The triumph meant their team was taken seriously and girls' football participation in Japan grew. Not far behind them is China, ranked at number 13. Their midfielder, Tang Jiali, has played for both Tottenham and Real Madrid. She'll play a central role in the team, especially in the fixture against England, who are a formidable side. Another big name in women's football is South Korean Ji So Yun, a former FA Women's Player of the Year. She's played alongside Sam Kerr for Chelsea and her striking ability will be needed when South Korea take on Germany. Southeast Asian countries, the Philippines and Vietnam, are the underdogs of the AFC as they make their debut. The Filipinas' historic qualification is partly thanks to former Matildas coach Alan Stajic, who was sacked from that job just before the 2019 World Cup. While women's football in Asia is growing, it has come with its challenges. Women in Saudi Arabia weren't allowed to attend football games until 2018, and women in Iran have faced similar bans. In 2020, Saudi Arabia eventually launched their own women's league. The AFC, though, is trying to build more momentum in Asia, hosting tournaments and events across the region to reach girls from Brunei to Indonesia. And with this World Cup hosted by Australia, a country a part of the Confederation, millions more people are set to be inspired to see anything's possible. South Africa, Morocco, Zambia and Nigeria will be flying their flags for CAF at this year's Women's World Cup. For South Africa, this could be a history-making tournament. Banyana Banyana made their World Cup debut in France in 2019 and didn't progress from the group stage. But don't let that fool you. They won all six games on the way to being crowned the Women's African Cup of Nations champions last year. So they're powerhouses in the continent right now. They'll be based in New Zealand and are in a group with Sweden, Italy and Argentina. Next up, Morocco. They became the most successful African team in men's or women's World Cup history in Qatar last year, with an awesome performance that saw them finish fourth. Can the women get closer to the trophy? Well, they're off to a good start. Ranked second in the African zone, they created history as the first Arab team to ever qualify for the Women's World Cup. Morocco's first game is against Germany in Melbourne. They'll also face South Korea and Colombia. Zambia are also a team to watch. They're the first landlocked African country to make it to the World Cup. Captain and striker Barbara Banda became the first female footballer to score successive hat-tricks at an Olympics in Tokyo. The Copper Queens also boasts Rachel Kundanji, who plays professionally for Madrid FC. Zambia is in a group with Japan, Spain and Costa Rica. 11-time African Cup of Nations champions Nigeria are the African favourites. The Super Falcons are also no stranger to the World Cup having attended every tournament since it started in 1991. But they've only reached the quarterfinals once, in USA in 1999. They're grouped with Canada, Ireland and the host nation Australia. Could this be the year that an African team goes all the way? We'll soon find out. There are 41 countries in CONCACAF and six countries from the Confederation will feature in Australia and New Zealand for the Women's World Cup. The USA, Canada, Jamaica, Costa Rica, Panama and Haiti. The USA are the most successful team in international women's football and will again be one of the favourites for the trophy this year. They've won the tournament four times, including the first edition in 1991 and four years ago in France. And they have four Olympic gold medals. They also have some of the most recognisable faces in the sport, including Megan Rapino. I can't believe we're back at the World Cup again. It's kind of crazy. Um, this is the best moment like of all of our career. 
Canada are another major contender as the reigning Olympic champions, but they've had a rocky build-up thanks to an industrial dispute with the National Federation. Christine Sinclair will play in her sixth World Cup. She's international football's all-time leading goalscorer. Women's football is growing in Costa Rica, boosted by the country hosting last year's Under-20 Women's World Cup. Las Ticas have qualified for their second World Cup after debuting in Canada 2015. Jamaica, known as the Reggae Girls, beat Costa Rica in the third place match at last year's CONCACAF W Championship. Van Zanten again, a good first touch, the right footed shot, and it's in! Van Zanten just coming into the game, converts in the 102nd minute. But they've recently penned an open letter expressing their utmost disappointment with the Jamaica Football Federation due to subpar preparations for the tournament. Haiti secured one of the final three qualifying places on offer at the playoff tournament in New Zealand earlier this year. It's the first time their men's or women's team has qualified. And they have one of the best young players in the world, 19-year-old Melchie de Mornay, who plays professionally in France for one of the biggest clubs in the world, Lyon. Panama became the 32nd and final team to enter the World Cup, also coming through via the playoff tournament. The USA and Canada will be the ones to watch from this confederation, but who knows what other surprises may lay in store. CONMEBOL has 10 member associations, the fewest of FIFA's six confederations. Brazil, Colombia and Argentina will be the three countries competing at this year's Women's World Cup. Brazil is the clear standout in South American women's football, as Canarinhas have competed in eight World Cups, losing the final in 2007. They also have two Olympic silver medals and have won eight of the nine Copa America Feminina Championships. And they have one of the greatest players in the history of the game, Marta, who is the leading goal scorer at World Cups with 17. The 37-year-old will be playing her sixth World Cup. After last year's men's World Cup victory in Qatar, football fans in Argentina are riding high and the women are hoping to get to the top two. From 2015 to 2017, the team didn't play any games and were unranked by FIFA. But things have improved and they're now on the rise with Atletico Madrid's Estefania Benini, the highest profile player. Colombia were runners-up at last year's Women's Copa America and 18-year-old Linda Caicedo won the golden ball and is one of the rising stars of the game. Conmebol might be small, but the three competing countries are ready to prove that they are mighty. Joint host Aotearoa New Zealand belongs to the Oceania Football Confederation, or OFC, the smallest of the world's six confederations and charged with looking over and developing the game across the South Pacific. As co-host, the football ferns will compete against Norway in the opening match of the tournament at Auckland's Eden Park before taking on the Philippines and Switzerland in Pool A. The Ferns have never won a game at the World Cup, so it's hoped the home crowd advantage will help them through to the round of 16. Half of the 32 competing teams will be based in Aotearoa, with 29 of the 64 matches scheduled to be played in Auckland, Hamilton, Wellington and Dunedin. When New Zealand automatically qualified for the tournament as co-hosts, there were hopes of a Pacific Island country making their World Cup debut. As five times Pacific Games gold medalists, Papua New Guinea were among the immediate favourites. Despite not playing a match for nearly three years, the Lakatoi made it to the World Cup playoff tournament after winning the OFC's Women's Nations Cup hosted by Fiji. But Panama proved too strong for PNG and they went on to take one of the three qualifying spots on offer. The World Cup is still expected to be a huge boost for football in the region, especially as interest in the round ball game grows. Last month, Fiji, Solomon Islands, Samoa, Papua New Guinea and New Caledonia competed in the first OFC Women's Champions League in Port Moresby, with New Caledonia's Academy Feminine taking out the inaugural tournament. 
The World Cup has also inspired the OFC to develop the Pacific Legacy Program 2023, with the vision of using the tournament as a catalyst for impact both on and off the pitch and activating a legacy of equal opportunity for girls and women in the Pacific. A legacy that's already been created. Twelve countries from UEFA will be represented in Australia and New Zealand for the Women's World Cup, including six of the world's top ten teams. Only two European countries have previously won the tournament. Norway in 1995 and Germany in 2003 and 2007. While the USA has dominated the women's game, Europe has emerged as the new powerhouse thanks to the rise of domestic leagues across the continent, especially the Women's Super League in England, where most of the Matildas play. FIFA President Gian Infantino threatened a World Cup TV blackout in Europe due to low rights offers. That's now been resolved. Football came home for England's women after winning last year's European Championships. Women's Euro 2022 broke attendance and broadcast viewing records and has seen a surge in girls and women playing the sport there. The Lionesses are considered the pre-tournament favourites by many, although injuries to some star players have put a dent in their hopes. Women's Euro runners-up and two-time World Cup champions Germany are another real threat, while Sweden are always consistent performers, having lost one World Cup final and two Olympic finals. It's been a tumultuous build-up for world numbers five and six, France and Spain. After several French players withdrew from the team due to a falling out with their coach, the National Federation decided to sack the manager just months out from the World Cup. They're now led by Hervé Renard, who guarded Saudi Arabia at last year's men's tournament. There's been a similar revolt in Spain. Last year, 15 players refused to play under coach Jorge Bilder, but he's remained in charge and some of those players have now returned. The Netherlands were runners-up in France 2019, while Norway and Denmark have had mixed results in the lead-up to the event, but boast world-class talent, including Penilla Harder and former Ballon d'Or winner Arda Hegerberg. Italy's best result at a World Cup was a quarter-final finish four years ago, while Switzerland are making their second appearance in the tournament. And Portugal and the Republic of Ireland have qualified for the first time. With so many contenders from UEFA, there's a good chance a European nation will be lifting the trophy on August the 20th. Thank <laughs> you.